Hello and welcome back to Let's Make a Game in C++ where we make a game using C++ and the library SDL and we use OpenGL for rendering. This is episode 3 and in this episode I'll be showing you how the main game loop is done, how we do events and how we do some basic screen stuff. We'll just color it in this episode. Uh, first of all some general info. Um, as you might have noticed, I'm not a native English speaking person. Uh, my native language is far from English. Uh, but I do. I have been learning English for quite some time. I'm fluent in reading, understanding, and writing English. But I have very little experience with speaking. So. But I hope I. I try to do my best in this tutorials and I hope that you can understand me. Uh, the other info there is that yes I do switch my desktop wallpaper every few days so today we have Princess Mononoke. So let's start with this episode. Windows users should start up code blocks, open up their project uh, and open the file we were using and for Linux users open up your preferred text editor, I'll be using Emacs as always and open up your file I just and that's a little too big this should be enough and the first thing I'm going to do in this episode because we well there is much talk about the main game loop but I'll be kinda short there so I'll just fill up the time with revising the code we did last time and uh, comment it so that later I'll put it online so you can download it if you don't want to copy paste from the video so that you can simply copy and paste the code into your text editor or ID. So let's revise the code. At the start, we have our headers. We specific the headers that are going to be used for our game. So we have sdl.h or on Linux sdl slash sdl.h for the main sdl function. Then we have sdl slash sdl under dash opengl.h or just uh, the sdl under dash opengl.h on windows so that we add the opengl commands and for we have iostream for basic input and output for our program this is the start of the of the program these are two parameters that you should put in always that's that's like the default thing to do. And at the start we have SDL in it, SDL in it, everything. In here we initialize SDL. I hope that I spell that right. Uh, as I said, my writing is fairly good, but I can be off sometimes. So we initialize video, audio, joystick, events, timer, and everything here. So SDL should work after this. After that we have to set how much OpenGL set OpenGL memory usage. Um, so we tell op OpenGL how much memory he can use. This is a good default setting that you should always use. Well not always, for now. But you can later play with it, try what works best for you. Next we have the caption of the vid window so when we the window pops up the name will be our woe our first game second parameter is just no then we set how big the window will be the size of the window it's 600 by 400 pixels 32 bit colors I think that's how it's set, and we use SDL OpenGL for rendering. Then we s 
specific the clear color this color is used when we clear the screen we have to do that every frame we'll come to that later and we also set um, what portion of the screen we will display because we don't always display, display the well we should but you can set it that you don't <coughs> uh, so the next thing we do is specific that we will use the GL smooth parameter for the shader model uh, we really sh you really should use that because coloring and stuff looks ugly really ugly without this so shader model use this and almost at the end we say that we will only use 2D that's GL projection and we save it using GL load identity we don't act that's saving we don't really save it but this is how it's done so we save it and because we don't do any 3D stuff we're going to disable um, depth checking because we don't do 3D stuff at the end as you can see we have our C out to the console that OpenGL is running and we pause a little so that we can see the window. So let's just compile this. Um, you should on Windows just press the build and run and on Linux you should use the default compiling command. I will I'll paste it up here, but in this episode I won't be doing that manually every time. I'll make sure that Emacs does that for me. Um, just a second, I have to s oh my god. I have to set something up here. main I had it wrong. So it compiled successfully and we can run it. And we have our first game, it's the title. And it's just a window, we cannot even close it. But thankfully we have our console so we can close it. It says OpenGL is running. So first so let's just close it. Uh, I'll just put the command up here make sure that you are in the folder where you have the uh, cpp file saved so the command is g++ minus o the name of the executable let's call it test the name of the file we will compile and uh, the linker settings of what we use on windows that's already we already defined that so you don't have to do that every time you just click compile and run and it should work and uh, but this is the command for linux users so now that we have our basic initial initialization uh, commented we're going to start with the main loop. So we're going to just do a count that main loop has started. So we'll know where. So for the main loop, uh, the main loop is uh, well, every game has frames per second, and usually games run at 60 frames per second. Uh, some games you can make it more so, uh, like or make it as much as your processor can handle it but usually games run at 60 frames per second 
so that means that the main loop will go through itself 60 times per second. So to start the loop we need an almost infinite loop. Some it should have one parameter on how long it should run. So we'll make a boolean or bool in C++ to uh, and name it is running and we make it to that true and then we make the main game loop which is going to be a while loop and while is running so this loop is going to go through itself as long as is running is true and in here we're going to be setting handling events, doing logic and rendering stuff on the screen. So first we have to do is make sure that when we click X on the window, let's just find that here, this X, that the program will close because it does not. We have to close it from the console. Uh, Windows users, yeah, it, it should also work there. So to handle events like clicking the X or pressing any button we have to make an object that handles events we, you have to do that before the main loop I'll just do that here and how we do it is named SDL event and we just name it event so the object is event and this is what takes care of all the events that happen in SDL. So while the game is running running, I'll just comment in. This is this handles the main loop. This is for handling with events and the main game loop. So, at the start of the game loop, we do input, then comes logic, and at the end, there is rendering to the screen. So, first we're going to do input, or let's, let's say events. So, every frame we want to check for events. So. Let's just, I'll just explain how events work. You have to like visualize a stack. A stack of events that stack up when you press. So like you press up, it goes to the stack. And you press another key, like down. I, I just make an arrow, I'm a bad writer. A drawer with the mouse. Um, and then you press another button like you press A and they all stack on a stack on an event stack that just goes on and on depending on how many buttons you press and what we have to do in the program in the input part is that it should take the lower event and handle and compare it with what could have hap happened. Uh, I don't know if it takes the event on the bottom of the stack or on the top of the stack but I think it's at the bottom. So first it will take the uh, that the up button on the keyboard was pressed it will compare it if we did some if we have to do something if that button was pressed and then it will dismiss this and take this event and compare it to things that should have happened if the down button was pressed. Dismiss this and go for this event. So in order to do that we need another while loop. This while loop takes those events and compares them to logic that should happen if a certain button or event happened. So we need sdl on dash pool event 
and in the parameter we put the uh, address of event so what this does it just takes every event from the event stack and here we do logic that should happen for a cer certain event I'll just compile this to make sure I'll just compile this to make sure that I spell uh, yeah it is SDL underscore pool event and then the address of the event object so the event object is where the events are stored so now when we take an event we want to check it what event it is so the X button on the window is a um, certain type of an event so we compare it if event dot type so that's the current event event that we are comparing to is equal to sdl quit because sdl quit is the event that happens when you press the x button and when we do press the x button we want to set that is running is false because we want to close the main game loop so we'll set the is running to false and what this does is the while the main game loop will close and SDL will quit and the program will shut down we can erase this waiting sentence and compile compile and run as you can see, it says OpenGL is running and main loop has started. So main loop is just repeating itself infinitely. And now what should happen when we press the X is that the pro program closes. And it does. So we press the X button. An event happened. And we took that event in this loop and compared the event if it's equal to sdl undash quit and if it is we close the param program or the main game loop by putting the is running boolean to false because that's the uh, condition this main game loop is using uh, we'll, add, we'll also add another event um, uh, let's just say that we also want to close the program when we press escape button so we need to compare it so if the event dot type is equal to sdl undash key key up uh, it's key up it's like this it's all um, capital letters so if the event is a type of event we have type that's the SL quit and this is the key up so the event type is that a key has been released a key down event occurs when a key is pressed down but we're going to close the program when we release the escape key so when event type is SL key up and event dot key dot key sim dot sim yeah that's a long word you just have to remember this you go you're going to use this a lot so it's event dot key dot key sim dot sim this is where you find all the keys so if the key that was released is equal to sdl key uh, that's how we check for keys is sdl key under dash and I think it's escape and if that happens we want to set that running is false yes I just comment this if escape no we just let's just comment the first line so if a button was uh, released and the button is escape and this is if uh, 
the window was closed. Let's just compile this, compile and run. Uh, for Linux users, if you forgot, you run the project by dot dash and the name of the file. So let's run it. We have our window and it closes if we press X. And if we are just going to press escape. I'm currently holding the escape button down and now I'm going to release it. And as you can see, it closed the project. As we said here. So this is basic event handling. Most of the events you're going we're going to use will be uh, something like this. We'll check if a key was pressed, like up, down, left, right, um, and if a key was released. So we're going to do movement based on that. Then we're going to do logic. But we won't do any logic here. And at the end we want to draw something on the screen. So at the start of the drawing process we have to clear the whole screen. This is what I have been talking about in the last episode the where I specified the clear color. So we go GL clear and we have to tell it what to clear and we have to clear SDL dot color Oh no, it's gl color. gl under dash color under dash buffer under dash bit. gl color buffer bit. This will clear the screen if you do 2D rendering. And at the end of rendering, we have to do an sdl under dash gl under dash swap buffers. What this does it draws everything we are drawing in this part to the screen. So here we say what are we going to draw and how and when we call this it will actually draw it on screen. So let's compile this and run our project. As you can see the color of the screen is now white. As we I just close this as we said in the GL color clear color we want it to be white. Let's just set it to red so that you can see the difference. Compile and run. And now it's red. The window is red. And let's close the project. So this is the main loop. We have to make an almost infinite game loop that closes when a certain event happens. And we said in this program that the event that closes the program is if we press X in the window or if we release the escape button. Logic will be done in the later episode and the rendering part we first clear the screen with the color we specified uh, in the initial initial initialization and at the end we draw everything on the screen. Let's make something Let's just make a um, little exercise with events. So we want that if the event type is SDL under dash key up, so that if we release the button and if the event button is let's say SDL K under dash A. So no let's make it R. So if we release the R button on the keyboard we're going to set the clear color to red and up here we are changing back to white so let's compile this and now when we press R the clear color of the screen changes to red and we can close the project. I mean the program. As you can see these are the events and you can change the clear color every time in the project whenever you want. It's not something that can only be done at the start of the program. And 
that basically is all for today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and make sure that you uh, tune in next time when we're going to be doing some basic rendering. We're going to draw a rectangle on the screen and we're also going to make it move. So we're getting closer to actually making something fun to play. So thanks for watching and goodbye.